We will begin Mass this morning with hymn number 970, 970 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Welcome to our celebration of Mass this morning. Welcome if you join us online. It's the fourth Sunday in Lent, and we are treated to another epic gospel narrative. Epic in length, again, but also epic in its message speaks as last week, about water and salvation, baptism, something we already all enjoy, that privilege, and an invitation to faith, a privilege we also enjoy, and a narrative about the growth in faith, an invitation that we also all enjoy. So to enjoy that to which we are invited, and that which we are already in possession of, we call to mind our sins, that we might celebrate together in word and in sacrament, ordinarily. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the whole Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations of the Easter mystery which are to come. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen myself a king amongst his sons. When Samuel arrived, he caught sight of Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed one stands there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Take no notice of his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not see as man sees. Man looks at appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Jesse presented his seven sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. He then asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? He answered, There is still one left, the youngest. He is out looking after the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not sit down to eat until he comes. Jesse had him sent for, a boy of fresh complexion, with fine eyes and pleasant bearing. The Lord said, Come, anoint him, for this is the one. At this, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him where he stood with his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord seized on David and stayed with him from that day on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light, for the effects of the light are seen in complete goodness and right living and truth. Try to discover what the Lord wants of you, having nothing to do with futile works of darkness, but exposing them by contrast. The things which are done in secret are things that people are ashamed even to speak of. But anything exposed by the light will be illuminated, and anything illuminated turns into light. That is why it is said, wake up from your sleep, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Praise. 
praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, for him to have been born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. He was born blind so that the works of God might be manifest in him. For as long as the day lasts, I will carry out the work of the one who sent me. The night will soon be here when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spat, made a paste with the spittle, and put this on the eyes of the blind man, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So the blind man went off, and he washed himself, and he came away with his sight restored. His neighbours and people who earlier had seen him begging said, Is this the man who used to sit and beg? And some said, Yes, it is the same one. And others said, No, he only looks like him. The man himself said, I am that man. And they said to him, Then how do your eyes come to be open? The man called Jesus, he answered. He made a paste, he daubed my eyes with it, and he said, Go and wash at Suleiman. So I went and I washed and now I see. And they asked, where is he? I don't know, the man answered. So they then brought the man who had been blind to the Pharisees, because it had been a Sabbath day when Jesus had made the paste and opened the man's eyes. So when the Pharisees asked him how he had come to see, he said, he put paste on my eyes and I washed and I can see. And some of the Pharisees said, he cannot be from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. And others said, how could a sinner produce signs like this? And there was disagreement among them. So they spoke to the blind man again. What have you to say about him yourself, now that he's opened your eyes? He is a prophet, the man said. However, the Jews would not believe that the man had been blind and had gained his sight. So they sent for his parents and asked them, Is this man really your son, whom you say was born blind? So, how is it? that he is now able to see. His parents answered, We know he is our son, we know he was born blind, but we don't know how it is that he can see now or who opened his eyes. He's old enough, let him speak for himself. His parents spoke like this out of fear of the Jews, who had already agreed to expel from the synagogue anyone who should acknowledge Jesus to be the Christ. And this was why the parents said, He's old enough, ask him. So the Jews again sent for the man and said to him, Give the glory to God. For our part, we know this man is a sinner. And the man answered, I don't know if he's a sinner. I only know that I was blind and now I see. And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did you open your eyes? He replied, I've told you once and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it all again? Do you want be to become his disciples too? At this, they hurled abuse at him. We are disciples of Moses, they said. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. And the man replied, Now, here's an astonishing thing. He's opened my eyes, and you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but God does listen to men who are devout and who do his will. Ever since the world began, it's unheard of for anyone to open the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, 
He couldn't do a thing. Are you trying to teach us? They replied. And you a sinner through and through since you were born. And they drove him away. And when Jesus heard that they had expelled him, when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? So the man replied, Tell me who he is so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. And the man said, Lord, I believe and worshipped him. And Jesus said, It is for judgment that I have come into this world so that those without sight may see and those with sight turn blind. And hearing this, some of the Pharisees who were present said to him, We are not blind, surely. And Jesus replied, Blind? If you were, you would not be guilty. But since you say, We see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. popped down the other day to see Father Dennis. It, as many of you know, he was transferred from hospital to the Little Sisters where he's recuperating um, and I wanted to pop in and, and see him, uh, see how he was doing, how his improvement was. Um, I, I know he's very precious to many of you and very dear to you because he was here a great many years and, and, and worked very hard in the parish. Um, so you'll be pleased to know he's, he's doing very well. He's well on the mend. He's got some way to go yet. It's quite a traumatic experience he's had, but he was in good form. And unfortunately, I didn't get to see Father Willie. He wasn't available. Um, but uh, good news is Father Dennis is, is doing fine. Father Willie, he'll get his bottle of whiskey at Easter time instead. So um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let, you, let you know about that too. But I, I was, when I was there, I was chatting to, to, the, to the new mother superior uh, at the Little Sisters in Group, and uh, she's a religious sister. She's from Tanzania, actually in the shadow of Mount Kilimanjaro, would you believe? And uh, I'm saying to her, how on earth did someone get from Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to the Little Sisters of the Poor in New York as the superior? And she told me a wee bit of her story, which is absolutely fascinating. She was a young girl in, in her village. She used to go to Mass, and there was a visiting priest one day left a book about the Little Sisters. And she said, and I just picked it up, and she said I was one of those children that reads anything that I can and she said I'd never heard of Little Sisters before but I read the, their story and I was fascinated by them and she said the nearest house that the Little Sisters had was, was a nine hours on a bus away across, across the border in Kenya so she said I, got, I saved up a bit of money took the bus, went and talked to the sisters, asked them about Little Sisters explored a vocation to the religious life with them um, and finally they took me in to the novitiate I studied with them and then I studied in, in Ireland uh, with the little sisters there and did various jobs in various places, including in, in one of their care homes. And she said, and then I was, I was asked by the superior uh, to come and uh, be the mother at the house in, uh, in, uh, in Greenock. And I thought, what well, a lovely story um, about a modern call and response. And what I really liked about it, because it, totally reflected the gospel of today, which I was preparing to, to talk about, was, I'll just use the word that was in my mind, graduality. The, the process was fairly lengthy. It took time, but there was growth at each stage of it. And, and we heard that last week as well, that the, the titles that these people, the, the, the women at the well last week, and the man born blind this week, Jesus is the man, he's a prophet, then he's a great guy, and then he's the Lord, worthy of worship. And, and that woman at the well went through exactly the same process last week, a gradual increase in knowledge and faith. And it's, it's dead easy, isn't it? It's obvious that the parallel between faith and sight is, is kind of writ large, that's what it's about. And it's an invitation for us to recognize that being washed, the waters of baptism, Give us sight, increase our faith, and enable and empower, just as the conversation with Jesus did last week, enable and empower that woman to become a witness, an evangelist, the man himself, a witness, an evangelizer, someone who speaks about their faith. 
And I, I was really thought it powerful that, uh, that, that sister, her narrative really, I found very encouraging, very inspiring. Now, I, I suspect you won't think that your narrative of faith, that your sense of call, that how you've grown in knowledge and love of the Lord and what it inspires you to do, you probably don't think that's very remarkable. But for someone else to hear it is absolutely, it's remarkable, it's powerful, it's inspiring, and it's encouraging. And I know we're bashful about these things, um, and we're reticent because we're West of Scotland, West of Scotland Catholics, but it is, it is worth sharing. Our narrative is worth sharing. Our story of graduality in our faith is worth sharing. And I, I meet boys and girls at school. The boys all have visions of themselves as scoring the winning goal at the Champions League final and being a Premiership footballer. And the girls, uh, equally so, some of them are for football, but maybe they, they see themselves as a, a, as a celebrity, as a, a movie star, um, as a, some, an influencer, um, and, and the very apex of, of their art. And, and we, we know, because our expectations are maybe slightly more realistic, um, we know that very few of those who play football at school go on to be captains of Premiership uh, football teams and score winning goals at Champions League finals. We, we know that statistic, and we know the number of, of one of these in, in show business, in pop music, uh, 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 on the internet, and the number who, who make it to the top is, is slim. But ambition is a good thing, but recognition that it's not all or nothing, that there is graduality in our lives is an important lesson we learn as we grow, because our, 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 realistic, our, our realistic goals become more realistic as we go, as we get a sense of success and a sense of failure, and how we cope with those things is powerful, and how we grow and how we develop. So why would our faith be different? Yeah, yeah, we all want to be saints and famous and for the good things that we do, but we recognize what the reality is, that sometimes we don't quite manage that. But we don't stop trying, and we recognize that graduality is important, that the growth in faith, in insight, in relationship with the Lord is like any other relationship, it's like any other growth, it's like any other journey, that we're on the journey, that we are better today than we were yesterday, and that tomorrow will be better again. And yes, we'll take steps back as well as steps forward. But the Lord can cope with that. His strong suit is forgiveness, remember. And we're in that season of repentance and forgiveness. Because already those gifts that are given to that man who was born blind, that woman who was looking for the living water at the well, and indeed next week, Lazarus, who needs new life, already those gifts are ours. So let's rejoice in who we are and who we're called to be and that we're on a journey together and that on that journey together we can inspire one another just with our story the man says why do you want to hear my story again do you want to become a disciple of jesus and they say no we don't want to hear it again we don't want to become a disciple hearing the story about how people become disciples makes people disciples and our story is no less valuable than that blind man's because we have had times in our lives where we've not recognized the presence of the Lord. So, for courage for our journey, for support of each other in our lives of faith, in our graduality, in inner growth, for each other and ourselves, we pray today. To profess together our faith, we stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make known our needs and prayers in the presence of God our Father. Give to the church the perfect vision of truth and the will to serve it. Open the eyes of the faithful to the faults that hinder their ministry, so that the light may shine through them to the glory of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Light in the darkness of the world, where so many stumble and fall in the blindness of pride, of false trust, of power misused. When people doubt the divine love and meet with suspicion the signs of its working, let the words of those who have known it be heard above the voices of mistrust. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give to our families and to all the homes of this community the love that remains faithful in adversity and does not fear when hostility comes from outside. In all our meeting with others, may we speak the truth with boldness and witness to the blessings that we have received. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all who are blind or whose sight is failing. Empower and guide those who work to treat afflictions of the eyes and bless their skill. Give courage to parents whose children have sight problems and bless their acts of care and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the departed whose sins have been washed away and who live now in the light of heaven that will never fade. Grant that we may come to share with them the perfect vision of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these our general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs, remembering those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. Pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are unwell, or caring for relatives, friends, or as their vocation in life. The Lord will bless and strengthen them for their generosity of heart. We pray for ourselves and for each other that we can recognise the power of our narratives of faith, graduality and growth, and knowledge and love of the Lord. And that our narrative might inspire others, that others' narratives may also inspire us. And finally, we pray for our dead. We remember those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur about now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. That they may all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God, our Father, you give us the gift of wisdom and of sight. You give us the gifts of life and light through baptism. Help us to live as your holy people. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. With joy we place these offerings before you, Lord, which bring us eternal remedy, praying that we may be faithfully reveal them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the whole world. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the whole human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of rebirth to make us your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures in heaven and in earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, as together with all the saints we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the death and the resurrection of your Son, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all who minister in your Church. Remember our brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, our spouse, the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For all the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be yours.
Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendors of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you, and love you in all sincerity. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Thank you if you joined us online. Uh, I know it's, as, as well as being the fourth Sunday of Lent, it's also Mother's Day. So I wish Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And I hope that uh, you are shown particular love and gratitude today in a variety of ways. And that you have a very enjoyable day. And you, you leave with assurance of our prayers for the very vital role that you play within your families and within our communities and society at large. Thanks for uh, putting up with my rasping throat last week and also for your help uh, during our little medical event. Uh, all is well, and, but thank you for your support and encouragement with that. Um, we have our food parcels. Uh, as usual, we're glad to accept any donations of money or of food, uh, and they're always available in the porch. If you know anyone who is in need, please take them a, a bag uh, uh, with, our, with our good wishes. Um, it's the annual collection for Skiaf today, a rightly internationally renowned Catholic charity. So uh, any donations you have for them will be very gratefully received. Um, and there is a letter from Bishop Brian McGee, the president of Skiaf, available in the porch if you wish to take a copy of that. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day, particularly if you're a mum, and a good week uh, ahead too. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in with our final hymn, number 938. Number 938. Mm -hmm. 